Oh, yeah, that one. Okay, now, are you ready? This is a sheep brain, and it is sent to us with all of the dura matter attached. So, I broke. Okay, um, you notice it's also got a bunch of fat on it, which is frankly kind of cool. Um, that fat uh, connects to the eyeball and cushions the eyeball. So your eyes actually have a lot of fat cushioning the back of them. All right, so uh, what we're going to do, first we're going to look at just the exterior structure. Since we have this whole thing, this is the optic nerve right there. See a little circle right there? Okay. So that's the optic nerve, comes from the back of the eyeball and carries visual information to the visual cortex, okay? It does smell, yeah. Uh, here we have the pituitary gland is right there, okay? That little thing right there, right? Everybody see that? You guys, you guys can come over here and like look over my shoulder. Uh, and then, let's see, what else do we have here? Now this is the, uh, here's the cerebellum here. So this part is the, uh, the pons and the medulla oblongata. And we'll clean it up a little bit so we can see better which part is which, okay? All right, now, the superior part, some of the dura matter broke. Sorry, dura matter. There we go. Okay. So this is the dura matter, and it's actually this whole thing as the dura matter with the arachnoid matter as well. Okay. Um, but you can see that it looks like, like if I try to pull apart these little gyri here, it looks like there's a really thin membrane connecting them. Okay. That's the pia matter. So it really is just stuck to the surface. Okay. It's really, really adhering to the brain. This is the longitudinal fissure here. And the dura matter, remember it makes the false cerebri. And make it go. It's kind of got broken. But this little thick part there with that black line, the black line is the superior sagittal venous sinus. Okay? All right, so let me cut the rest of this down the, the dura matter and just so you appreciate how tough the dura matter is I'm going to try to break it with my fingers I can't <laughs> now that's my th that's my finger moving on it it's not it breaking okay. it's not breaking okay. all right so there's the dura matter oh, let me. all right right now I'm cutting through that confluence of sinuses and then this line back here is where the uh, tentorium cerebelli starts. Come on. Okay. Uh, right. So you can see like this, this area right here is really thick because that's those, that area where those, the confluence of sinuses and the tentorium cerebelli, the falx cerebelli and the falx cerebri, where they all come together. So that's what I'm cutting through right here. No, all the bones are gone. This is just brain. Yeah. Um, the sphenoid would have been right here. Okay. So, all right. Now I'm going to take this off. And what's going to happen, unfortunately, is that our optic nerve and our optic, well, no, no, our optic nerve comes with it. Can you let go, please? Can you let go? Excuse me. Okay, there. Our pituitary gland came with it, okay? So this is going to happen for your brains when you look at your brains. You're going to go, where's our pituitary gland? I don't see it. And I'm going to go, it's in your dura mater. Okay, so it usually comes off with the dura mater because remember, it's got dura mater on the inferior side and it's got that little t uh, diaphragm cell over the top. So it's encased in a little pocket of dura mater that protects it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, now let's look at the optic nerve. So here is, wait, where'd it go? I lost my optic nerve. There it is. Okay, so there's the end of the optic nerve. This is where the eyeball would have gone. 
And I can cut through this fat, and when we dissect eyeballs, you are going to have to cut a lot of fat away to get to both the optic nerve and to the eyeball itself. You can actually see the eye muscles here. Oh. See that dark stuff? That's, that's an eye muscle. Okay, so I guess we could try to figure out which one it was. That is probably the, yep, not even going to try. I'm completely disoriented here. Okay, but we do have, um, here's another eye muscle right there. Okay, yours are going to be a little less distinct when we do the eyes because you're going to have cow eyes and they were just, um, they were cut out when the cow was butchered, so they're not really cut out very nicely, unfortunately. Okay, so here's our optic nerve. Okay, so you can see it's a really tough, thick structure. Okay, um, and I'm going to cut through the tendinous ring here that's holding these muscles together. And come on. It helps during a dissection if you talk to it. It really does help it go more easily. Trying to cut these muscles off without cutting A, my finger, or B, the nerve. Please don't cut your finger. The tape paperwork is horrible. Okay. Now notice that I'm using the scissors and not the scalpel. You actually have a lot more control with the scissors most of the time. So for most things, the scissors are a better choice. Also, as I said, our scalpels are not that great. Okay. All right, so come on, let go, let go. Almost there. Almost there. Mmm, smells nice, doesn't it? All right, so there, that's our optic nerve. Okay. Now, this nerve is huge. This is carrying a ton of information from your eyes. Uh, the nerves that, like for the um, abducens nerve. That one's going to be much, much smaller, okay? All right, so this one connected here at the optic chiasm. So this portion here, that is the optic chiasm, okay? Right there. So this is the center of the optic chiasm, right? And then from here back, it would be optic tract. Good? All right. Now that we've taken the, um, the yes. Before. And the slides, the track is represented by lines? Yeah. Uh, it, that's just for representation. That's right? just for representation. Okay. Yeah, it just looks, There's if we no dissect it out, it looks just like the optic nerve. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, so now here we have midbrain, okay, pons, and medulla oblongata. Okay, and it's kind of hard to tell where one stops and the next begins, right? They're just sort of bulges here. Without more of the spinal cord, it's kind of hard, like, which of this is the medulla or it's not. Also, I'm not that familiar with sheep anatomy, so. <laughs> All right, but what we do know is there's our cerebellum, there's our cerebrum. Notice that uh, the cerebellum on a sheep is really large in comparison to the cortex, or the, the cerebrum, excuse me. Okay. Why would that be? What does the cerebellum do? Balancing. Hmm? Balancing. Balancing and? Correct. 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 Yeah, corrects movement, smooth muscle movements, right? Okay. Um, and what does the cerebrum do? What's your frontal lobe do? Decision making. Decision making. Impulse control. Yeah, there's not a lot of decision making going on, okay? We also, a lot of your cerebrum is used for rational thought, okay? Incorporating all of that sensory and motor information and making connections between different things. A lot of that happens in the cerebral cortex. Sheep don't do a lot of thinking. I mean, no offense to sheep. They're not the brainiest species in the world. So their cerebellum which is involved with smooth muscle movements, especially rhythmic and repetitive muscle movements, like chewing and eating, is very large, or, or excuse me, walking as well. Whereas their cerebrum, involved in rational thought, is not that big. Okay? All right, so here is our latitudinal, or longitudinal fissure, excuse me. Latitudinal, really? Um, so I can stick the probe right down here, and I'm just going through the pia mater 
to separate the two, come on, to separate the two hemispheres so that we can see that the cerebral cortex does go down inside that fissure. Okay, so you can see the little, the wrinkles continue inside that fissure. Good? Okay. Now, that white thing down at the bottom, that's the corpus callosum. So now I'm going to use a scalpel to cut through the corpus callosum so we can separate the two hemispheres. And if I do this right, we'll be able to see one of the ventricles. Okay. Actually, this right here is pretty cool. Try to do this. You know what, ants, I really don't need your help here. All right. Ooh. So what I did was, I actually, remarkably, there's a little septum dividing the ventricles, and I cut through it. <laughs> so you can actually, these holes right here, those are ventricles. So you can actually see into the ventricles on both sides. Okay. Now over here, I'm going to put this up to the camera. See that black stuff right there? Okay. See that black stuff? That is the choroid plexus. So that... In there? Anybody see that? Can you see that? That would be the, the make of the cerebral spinal fluid. That would be. And what kind of cells is it? That is ependymal. Ependymal. Those are the ependymal cells. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, now I also cut through the corpus callosum, which is this, excuse me, this white layer here, okay, and the thalamus, which is this area here. All right, now, remember, this is the front, this is the back. So this thing right here, yep, that's the pineal gland, all right? Now, it's really hard to cut exactly through the center of this thing, so my pineal land, gland ended up all on one side. So you may pull your, your brain out of the jar and say, where's the pineal gland? Look on the other side, okay? It, probably on the other side of the brain. All right, this, this structure right here with these sort of dark, dark veins on it that I cut in half, that's the midbrain. Okay? All right. And then if we look here, let me take that out of the way. So here's our thalamus, here's the hypothalamus, and that little thing right there, that's the infandibulum, which connects the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. Okay? And again, our pituitary gland isn't there because it came off with the dura mater. And that's probably going to happen to your brains as well. Okay? All right, so let's do a couple more cuts. I'm going to cut through the cerebellum and the spinal cord and the brain stem so we can see these structures. All right. So now we can see a little more obviously the various brain stem structures. Okay? And you can see the arbor vitae of the cerebellum. Remember the white matter is called the arbor vitae. Okay? All right, now let me show you one more thing. I'm just going to cut a coronal section through here so that you can see the white and dark matter of the brain. And it really is, it really looks white and gray. Yeah. So, you know, when we say white matter, gray matter, they named it like because that's what it actually looks like. I mean, they could have gone tan or possibly ecru, <laughs> beige, I don't know, but, all right? Now, the other thing we were talking about is how hard it is to figure out which the central sulcus is. <laughs> Seriously, I got nothing. It's around here somewhere. Um, the lateral sulcus is this line here. So the insula, here's the lateral sulcus, okay? My story and I'm sticking with it. So it should be, if I, if I cut through here, we should be able to see the insula. I could be wrong. Uh, it's not coming apart correctly. Anyway, the insula would be in there. Okay? Any other questions? The, um, the two parts of the membrane, are, are they visible? The very uh, <sighs> there are these. So that's the superior and that's the inferior colliculi? Yeah. Okay, those little nubbins right there. Nubbins a technical term. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 
Uh, so groups of three or four, I recommend the side count.